Hey everyone, it is Cynix, and I am finally back after a two-month hiatus. Uh, my old computer crapped out on me, so I've had to get a new one as well as update all my software and everything. So it's always a bit of a hassle, um, especially when you're in your comfort zone of your old programs and your computer and everything set how you like it. Uh, but I think I should be back in the swing of things now. I got a new version of Photoshop and Painter, so they're a little bit weird to adjust to, but I think I'm used to them, and I should be able to answer questions about software a bit easier now that I'm using versions that were made in the past eight years. Um, and hopefully the video quality will also be better. I'm going to try to do 720p. As long as I don't mess it up in post-processing, it should look a lot prettier. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys had a good new year, and I'm going to start 2012 off with a quick and simple visual sketchbook. I don't know why I said visual. I meant a video, video sketchbook. Um, and I'm just going to do something simple, which is very typical of what I normally draw when I'm just messing around or uh, I'm just kind of noodling around in a sketchbook. And that is, I like to draw characters in crazy perspectives. Uh, so you can see I already formed a head here, and it's in a bit of a top-down perspective, and there's a bit of short, <laughs> a bit of foreshortening going on. Um, the, obviously, the forehead is completely giant compared to the chin, and stuff like that. So I want to kind of establish that crazy foreshortened look, and I'm just gonna run with it and kind of bring the torso out and make it look like he's flying around or floating through space or who knows but as you can see I'm kind of building the body in a very procedural way so I did the upper torso with the shoulders then I went back into the lower torso and you can see there's like a little butt there um, and I usually just don't bother with clothes when I'm trying to do a crazy perspective just because I need to focus on the different curves of the body um, you don't want to get too distracted by doing your folds and your different clothing shapes and stuff like that uh, so you just stick with the basic anatomy and work on it and stuff like that um, so the farther back you go into perspective you'll notice that I'm trying to be more careful with my lines it's something I mentioned a little bit in I think my warm-up video uh, where the more perspective you have going on the more accurate you have to be with your lines because the more um, the more awkward it will look if it's even off by just a tiny bit so you have to take kind of more care to hit them just right so they don't look horrible uh, versus something which doesn't have any perspective going on you could kind of be a little loose a little more uh, carefree with your lines uh, but you can see I built my legs back in a very procedural fashion uh, once again with the upper leg and then the lower leg and then the heel and then the lower foot so I'm kind of really working things out into just simple geometric shapes um, and all the while thinking about them in my head as they go back into 3D space so I'm kind of using my brain powers to kind of build it out um, mentally before I draw it um, but you can see how much foreshortening is going on when you notice like this the length of the leg is actually pretty much the same as the length of the head um, it might even be smaller so obviously if your head is longer than your leg um, you should probably consult a doctor or you might just be in a really interesting perspective um, so my Ooh, I think my voice is going out on me just a little bit, but I'll try to hold it together. Uh, you can see I drew one arm. His right arm is going back into space and coming out of his forehead. Um, actually, it's just behind his head, but you kind of ignore the head and try to picture it in your brain, um, how it's going back into space, and then coming back forward to the side. So um, it, it loses some of, of its size with foreshortening, but then kind of gains it in a very flat way by being parallel with the camera um, and stuff like that's going on so you can see I'm doing that with the other arm too uh, the bicep is going back into space so it's kind of getting shrunk down as it goes back uh, but then the forearm is kind of more in a sideways pose so it's not losing too much uh, too much size as it goes out uh, but you can see here I'm kind of demonstrating a couple things with hands. I, I drew a hand there, but it doesn't really make any sense. 
Um, it might make sense if I did the other one in a similar fashion. Uh, but you always kind of want to keep your hands and fingers and things like that flowing in a very um, natural way that makes sense with the other hand. Uh, so if one hand's like wide open and spread like that and the other hand's not, it kind of creates this weirdness uh, that you want to avoid and just kind of want to make things flow in a very natural way. I think the word flow is very important when you're dealing with hands and fingers. You always kind of want to, the fingers want to be flowing with the other fingers and the hands kind of want to be flowing with the other hands. And everything just kind of wants to mesh together. Uh, so you can see I was very loose and simple with my hands. They're just kind of triangular shapes. Um, that's all you really need. Uh, but here we go. I'm doing some hair stuff. I'm keeping it very kind of energetic and loose. I always want to make my lines um, in kind of quick, bold strokes. I don't want to kind of do them slowly or scratch at them. I just kind of want to move my arm and get that nice energy. Because uh, you can tell when a line's been made in a very slow way versus being just kind of a nice natural stroke. Um, it kind of reads, and it's a, kind of a very subtle thing, but it definitely reads in your brain. You see that energy and you can kind of feel it and it, it has that nice kinetic feel to it. Uh, so that's always something I like to do. And I made my uh, character here slightly decent by putting on some, I don't know, underwear or I guess I'll make it like a swim trunk or something. Um, just so there's no nudity going on. I wouldn't want YouTube to get mad at art and nudity and stuff like that. Um, but you can see here, I think I'm done with my line art. I have this weird little pose. It's like he's gliding through the air, floating through the air. I wasn't sure. Maybe he's diving into a pool. Maybe he's just diving out of a plane in his swimsuit. Uh, maybe he's cliff diving. Who knows? Uh, but at this point, I decided to just to just add a nice blue sky background to kind of keep it nice and airy to kind of match the pose and everything like that so um, I don't want to just use like a paint um, sorry the paint bucket I think it's called yeah I don't just want to use the paint bucket and throw in a flat color uh, use your brush you know make give it some personality everything no matter what it is even if it's just a simple flat color uh, do it by hand and don't make it too perfect and crisp or else it looks very computery and boring and it lacks that life and personality that you um, as an artist will be able to bring into anything um, just by your own muscle control and whatnot makes it more personal uh, so as you can see, the kind of direction of the figure is is kind of in a diagonal from the bottom left to the upper right. Uh, so to kind of go into some slight compositional stuff, I wanted to I wanted to match that and keep the eye on the page by kind of looping it back around. So you can see this this cloud I'm drawing. Um, it kind of goes against that direction, but it also kind of goes from where your eye would be traveling. Say the tip of his foot um, kind of goes off in that direction. But I wanted to loop it back around. Say your eye kind of comes back around with the cloud in, in a slightly circular shape and brings it back to the front and back to the face. And so that kind of helps to keep the eye on the page, hopefully. I mean, it's not... Um, overly interesting, just a very basic compositional thing that I'm showing. Uh, but stuff like that's always good, especially when you have skies and clouds. Clouds are a great tool for kind of meshing <laughs> meshing your composition and making it look good. Because you can kind of do whatever you want with them and make them really interesting and they're just like always available to you to to make things look a little better and to make your eye stay on the page. Um, whether it's, you know, just kind of very simply leading your eye away from the corner, uh, which I did kind of a poor job of it with that bottom left corner, but that's okay. It kind of keeps with that looping motion um, and stuff like that. So I made this little whoosh coming off the guy. I don't really know what it is. I'm just going to call it a whoosh, a little whoosh of air. And that's just kind of a visual, I don't know, style thing just messing around it's always good to have fun with your art throw in little uh, visual things like that same way I throw in like random text and stuff like that um, just keep it keep it within your personality if that's not your style then certainly don't have to that's just a very 
kind of stylistic thing to do and always be experimenting at least even if it doesn't work out it's it's fun to at least try different stuff so I'm not gonna go too in-depth into skin tones because obviously I just did a whole series of videos on painting faces which can cover that stuff a lot more if you want to really take this into a finished stage uh, but I do just want to lay in some simple base tones so I laid in a simple base tone of uh, my skin tone and then as I'm working back into distance um, as the the parts of his body that are farther away from camera I am kind of desaturating my skin tone a little bit and making it a little bluer um, and that will help to sell the distance a lot more um, obviously if the back of his feet and all that areas were more saturated than the front it would look really awkward to your eye and I probably should have shown that off but um, you always want your saturation to be closest to camera and you want your kind of details to be closest to camera I guess I think I summed up all of that kind of minor um, stuff that is associated with showing um, distance in the video um, I think it's the video about color I forget what it's called let's draw color something like that it kind of tackles that stuff a little bit so you might want to check that out it's a very simple video uh, but basically when you're showing stuff at distance you want to kind of trick the eye into seeing things at different distances by using both saturation um, sharpness and both your atmospheric uh, changes so this would be like using blue and stuff like that um, and I think there's actually a more scientific reason that there's more blue as things go back and uh, less oranges and it has something to do with wavelengths and stuff like that but I won't get into that right now um, for now I'll just keep it nice and simple uh, so you can see I gave him some yellow swim trunks let's say uh, and that's just kind of once again a choice that's made to complement the blue uh, when it wanted to just do like a simple blue or anything because that would kind of not make sense and not really pop at all uh, so I went with the yellow which is kind of complementing that um, and, it, and as well as complementing his uh, skin tone and not matching the skin tone and since I went with the yellow I decided to also go with a blonde hairdo which I wasn't really planning on but then again I wasn't really planning on anything I kind of started this video without any direction um, I started sketching without any real end goal and then I just kind of procedurally built it out and I, I'm still procedurally building it out with the yellow and then the blonde and then just kind of putting in some basic hints of uh, top down lighting but I didn't get too deep into it um, because I didn't want to really make a second video about uh, skin tones and stuff like that uh, this is after all just a video sketchbook um, so you can see I did do some of the tricks that go with skin tones such as adding redness uh, to the areas of the skin that are more exposed to sun such as shoulders and hands and uh, the nose and cheeks and as well as adding a little bit of redness around the eyes or anywhere where there's thinner skin and the blood vessels might be more on the surface um, and stuff like that so I think that is about it for this one I might go back in and actually you know get rid of the line art and make it into a more finished digital painting and upload that and I will certainly let you guys know if I do uh, but for now I'm just gonna wrap up the video like that and you can see me do a quick value check which doesn't really show off anything you can see how flat and boring the values are because I didn't really paint it out so uh, it's just kind of a flat tones here and there um, and obviously the foreground figure jumps from the background but that's about it uh, I bumped up the brightness and contrast just a little bit just for fun I'd probably do that if I finished it so just kind of hinting at finishing it um, and there I was just doing my zoom out test to look at everything and I think that's about it for this video so I hope you guys have a good 2012 and hopefully you guys do a lot of art and hopefully I do a lot of art and videos and lots of tutorials and fun stuff and I guess that's all so thanks for watching everyone and thanks for supporting my little videos